Hi everyone, my name is Arvin Olano and welcome to my YouTube channel. So, nobody asked, but in today's video, I am sharing some popular IKEA products that you shouldn't buy. So item number one is the Cinerlig Basket Pendant. Now, you guys, I have seen everybody have this pendant in their dining room, in their kitchen, okay? This is not the pendant to get if you're looking for an affordable basket style pendant. It's so basic, literally everybody has it, and why would you wanna have a light fixture that everyone has, okay? A light fixture is meant to brighten up a room, it could make a beautiful statement, and it's one of my favorite ways to really make your space feel like your home in your design style. And it's not gonna feel like that if you have a light pendant that Sally Sue has next door, okay? There are a lot of other affordable options at Ikea, like the Kinnuckschult. Okay, I can't pronounce any of these names. Also, I like Simrasham. Simrasham? I like her, she has this beautiful like curved detail with like the bubble lights, you are gonna get so much light payout out of that, wow. And these pendants have a little bit more design behind them. Unlike Cinerlig, okay, she's basic, we're gonna say bye bye to Cinerlig. So the next item that you shouldn't buy from Ikea is the Kalax Shelf Unit System. Mm. So I'm gonna be speaking from experience here. Andrew actually had one of these in his office way back when we first started dating and when I'm telling you, it just felt so juvenile. It just felt so juvenile. This is something that you may want to put in a kid's room, I guess, but it's just so... Ugh, you guys, there's nothing stylish about this bookshelf. And if you are an adult and you have one of these, girl, sell it on OfferUp, okay? We don't need Kalax in our homes. I do recommend the Vitzjo shelf unit. Now this one with like the black iron, the glass details, has a little bit more going on and you can style it up, make it look pretty. It still has that simple and elegant line, kind of like Kalax, but this one just is like, this one could look really expensive. The key to making some of your Ikea items work is like you have to mix it in with some of your investment pieces. You can't just do Ikea everything because then it's just gonna look like you are in Ikea, right? Am I right? But Vizjo is a good one. Also, what's another good one? Fajalbo is a good one. This one I think has like this wooden frame top on each shelf. And again, has a little bit more pizzazz. It's a little more exciting. You get that warmth of the wood tone mixed in with that black iron. Loving that contrast. These are so much better than Kalax. Kalax is just trash, you guys. Kalax is no, 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 oh no. Ooh, I feel like this video is getting a little bit heated really quick, so I'm gonna go grab a quick drink. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, I feel like I need a glass of rosé. So this portion of the video is in partnership with Bright Cellars. They are an online wine subscription service that will deliver wine straight to your door. Now, I'm all about convenience lately. Bright Cellars has a really easy online quiz that will let you know some of the top wines that you should like depending on your taste. When I'm looking for wine at the grocery store, I never know what to look for. Ah! Oh my goodness, is it okay? It's okay. So I'm usually looking at the label and I'm like, oh yeah, that's cute. What's so great about Bright Cellars is they actually send you an education card with every bottle and it tells you the serving temperature, what to eat it with, which is so awesome because I never know what to eat with my wines. Anyone else? Let me get my wine glass from the floor. Okay, let's go ahead and try this out. Mmm, exactly how I like it, you guys. It's light, it's sweet, it's fresh. So if you're interested in checking out Bright Cellars, go ahead and click that link down below in my description box. They're actually giving you guys 50% off your first six bottle box. Okay, so the next item that you shouldn't buy from Ikea is the Alex drawer. Now, when I was looking at this item online, it literally shows some kid playing like games in his game room and that's exactly what your space is gonna look like if you have these drawers. It's gonna look like a kid's room, okay? It is not mature, it is not cute. It's just like, what are you even trying to put in there? Do you have like that many? Mm. 
do you have that many files that you need to buy like the super cheap looking drawer? Okay, it's just like not stylish. It's just not. Okay, so the next item on my list that you shouldn't buy from Ikea is the Renz sheepskin rug. I just don't know how ethically sourced the sheepskin pieces are. They are so mass produced. They're only $29.99 and I don't know. If something is produced like at this level from Ikea, I can't imagine that it's good. So if you have any idea on how they source their sheepskins, make sure you sound off in the comments down below and let me know. Also, if you like disagree with any of what I'm saying, let me know also. I love chatting with you in the comments. I don't really have an alternative for the Renz sheepskin. I feel like this is a very specific look and a very specific product. All right, so the next item that you shouldn't buy from Ikea is the Ektorp sofa. Ugh, I feel like this is just a really bad like copy of a Pottery Barn sofa. And I've seen a ton of photos of these online where like the armrest is all wrinkly and everything else is really wrinkly and it just like doesn't look good. You know what I mean? It's just like, it doesn't look put together. Oh my gosh, do you know what does look good wrinkly? Linen, linen sheets, linen anything. You know what doesn't look good wrinkly? The armrests of your sofa. It's just not gonna look luxurious. <laughs> So don't get the Ektorp sofa. Instead, if you're gonna go for a sofa from Ikea, go ahead and get Farlov. This one, to me, looks a little more luxurious. I love like the single bench seat, okay? And then the skirted detail. This is giving me like Studio McGee vibes. I feel like Crate and Barrel also has a sofa like this. And if this one gets a little bit wrinkly, I think it'll be okay because the style looks a little more casual a little bit more like relaxed. At Torp just looks really like clunky and fussy. You know what I mean? Like it's too, I feel like it's a little too traditional for me and Farlov has a little bit cleaner lines, looks inviting with that bench seat. I would actually like, oh my gosh, Farlov looks so good. Next item on my list is the Malm bed. Now specifically the one that has like the opening underneath. Can you imagine walking at night and you hit your toe Okay, you, you hit your toe on that hard wood veneer surface. Ouch, that's gonna hurt and it just doesn't, I feel like this just does not look comfortable. I don't know you guys, I don't know about mom, but I mean, if you do have to choose the mom, they have one with the drawers. Now, I feel like th at least this one has like a little bit more functionality. You can hide some of your clutter in the drawers. It still looks uncomfortable but at least it looks like a full bed. I'm just really confused about this collection because I don't, I would not want to put my head up against a wood veneer headboard at night. I would have nightmares. The next item that you shouldn't buy is this Stockholm flat woven net print rug. Ooh, this is rough, you guys. I feel like if you want your home to look basic as f this is the rug that you would get, but we don't want that, okay? No, no, no. We don't want a basic rug like this. I don't even know. It just looks so outdated. Instead, if you're gonna go for the Stockholm collection, I love this one, the black and white stripe one. Ooh, now, now we are talking. This rug is stunning. To me, it looks so classic and timeless. You can never go wrong with a black and white stripe moment. It looks so graphic. Let's take a look at the styling for this photo though. This one has like a traditional look to it with like the high back chairs. It looks so good. And this next photo, again, more traditional. You're mixing the black and white stripe with this ditzy print wallpaper. Whoo! Whoever did that styling, amazing, because stripes and florals look really cute together. Make sure if you're getting a patterned rug, go for a classic print like this striped one, because you can't go wrong. So the next thing that you shouldn't buy from Ikea is large printed bedding sets. Ooh, this is just, this is gonna get dated really quick. You're gonna get tired of waking up with all these flowers on your bed, on your pillow. Like this is hurting my eyes just looking at all of these big flowers. If you're gonna go for a printed bedding situation from Ikea, go ahead and check out the Copa... Copa Ranca. <laughs> Gotta love these names. This one has almost like a toile de joie 
style. Very toile de joie a la Dior. This is super chic and you can match it with some solid sheets, maybe a solid throw on top to break up all the print. And because it's like that ditzy print, it's a little more timeless, a little more classic. You're not gonna get tired of it. And the key is to match it with some solid pillows. You gotta break up all that print. Otherwise it's just like print overload, you know? Woo! Okay, so the next item on my list is the Strand Mon wing back chairs. Girl, we don't need this clunky chair in our homes, okay? Do you see the model? She is like getting swallowed by this chair. And then the styling has this clunky ottoman on top. You guys, we don't need clunky furniture. We want something sleek, elegant, but still cozy. And Strandmon is not the tea, sis. Let's go ahead and go with the Farlov accent chair instead. This makes me want to curl up in a ball, read a book, and put my feet up on that ottoman. Even though the ottoman has a little bit more of a like clunky feel, I would actually ditch a matching ottoman and go for something a little bit lower and not so, you know, big. But with Farlov, because it's a little bit lower, the curves make it a little more elegant and it's not so like Strandmon where you're like, you know, getting swallowed by the chair. So, Farlov is great, $399. Ooh, that's kind of expensive. Okay, Farlov, okay. I, we like that. We like a little nice price point. Okay, so the last item that you don't want to get from Ikea is the Fajalbo TV unit. I'm just confused about this one because the screen detail in the front, I mean, you can still see the items through it. And to me, like looking at this photo, it's like you're trying to hide the clutter, but the clutter is still visible. So to me, like it doesn't make sense. It just looks unfinished to me for some reason. If you wanna get a TV unit from Ikea, okay, Besta, okay, she's the Besta. <laughs> she's the Besta. And I see a lot of people get this piece because it looks really sleek and I love how it's off the ground. So you're using your vertical space to decorate rather than, you know, taking up so much room. And you can customize it again with your own knobs. I feel like there's a lot of DIYs you could do with Ikea products and comment down below if you've DIYed anything from Ikea. I'm curious to know because Kudos to you. All right, everyone, that was it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was fun to film. Um, make sure you sound off in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with anything that I have said today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, everyone.